So we're going to have uh, the, the format and the structure of our, of our discussion this evening. There's going to be two segments of questions uh, by the moderators, from the moderators. Each segment is going to last no longer than 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, we may modify as we move along. We may alternate. Right now, we're just going to go with place one first and then place four. But we'll, we'll, we don't want to leave you guys out of the conversation too long, so we may alternate a little bit. But we'll, we'll have that discussion amongst ourselves over there. Uh, after both segments are completed, we will move the event to a social event for the folks who are here. If you didn't get a chance to, if your question wasn't asked, if your area of interest was not asked or, or uh, discussed, then you are free to speak to the candidates and, and have that conversation with them one-on-one. -on -one. So there's an opportunity there for, for you to catch up, to get to know them better, and to get to understand their positions better. <coughs> Each candidate will have one minute uh, to answer general questions and 30 seconds for rebuttals. 30-second uh, follow-ups may also be used at the, at the uh, uh, apparently my discretion. So uh, we'll, we'll be very, very um, generous with the uh, follow-ups or discussions. This is really just an exchange of ideas. Uh, this is an, an, as opposed to a debate. So um, <clears throat> with that being said, uh, each candidate is going to have uh, one minute to introduce themselves. And so, Mr. Simpson, I'll start over here with you and we'll, we'll just proceed left to right. Well, my name is Les Simpson. I'm a 20 year resident of Amarillo, moving here in uh, 2002. Uh, we've lived here, we've raised a family here. We love this community because it matches our values, a conservative community where uh, faith is important. I've uh, served in a variety of roles in volunteering in the community, in churches, organizations, nonprofits, as well as other leadership roles to advance and do things uh, for the improvement in the community. And I love Amarillo, which is one of the reasons uh, why I'm running. I spent 15 years as publisher of the Amarillo Globe News, which gave me a lot of experience and in, uh, in-depth knowledge of uh, local government, how it works, and what it's supposed to do. And uh, I've done my homework and spent that time doing that. And so I look forward to this evening and particularly appreciate uh, like we said, the, the opportunity to get young people to involved in voting. I knocked on a lot of doors of people that vote a lot, and not many of them were under 50, much less 18. So it's good to see people that are getting involved in that, and thank you guys for doing that today. Thank you. My name is Claudette Smith, and I am running for City Council Place 4. I am a 37-year resident of Amarillo. I am a strong conservative. I am a Christian woman. I am a mother of two beautiful children. I am an owner of four local businesses. I am a very highly regarded leader here in Amarillo. But most importantly, I have spent the past seven years fighting for each and every single one of you here in this room tonight. And I would love the opportunity to join forces with our newly elected mayor and council members of whom I have their vote, their wives' endorsements, and even some of their family members' endorsements in my campaign in moving Amarillo forward in the right direction and making Amarillo a better place for all to live, work, worship, and do business. Thank you. Good evening, appreciate you guys coming out tonight. I know I'm a little taller, sorry about that. Uh, Josh Kraft, runner for Emerald City Council, place one. A little bit about myself, most of you already know. I'm a lieutenant for Randall County Fire Department full time. I'm an instructor out at Emerald College. I'm married to my wife, Ashley, We've been together for 10 years this year. Father of two small children. And I can tell you right now, um, a vote for me, you're gonna get someone that understands what it's like to take an oath and to live and die by that. And uh, I just wanna say thank y'all for coming out tonight and I want to bring a fresh perspective to the citizens of Amarillo and represent the young generation. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Dean Crump. I'm also running for, uh, for Place One City Council and, and a little bit about myself. Excuse me, I think Josh is a little taller than me. A um, little bit about myself, I've been here for 59 years, um, I'm born and raised here, I've got a beautiful wife of 35 years, I've got two grown children, uh, Jordan and Callie, I think they're watching on the live stream, so I hope, um, 
and then I've got one granddaughter. So it's really important to me for, for, for this city to, to progress the way that I think it needs to progress. Uh, I am a Christian. I'm a very conservative person. Um, and I, I, want this, I want the same for our city. We've got a lot of uh, interesting challenges ahead of us in terms of infrastructure and, and trust and transparency. And uh, I, I want to make, I, I want to join our council, uh, our newly elected council, and mayor and council members. And I think uh, we align pretty well in that. And I look forward to, uh, to serving with them if, if elected. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think everyone uh, came in under 58 seconds, so that was a very good job. Um, we're going to start with place one, and uh, for uh, and I'll start off with the first question here, and we're going to go through the questions, all the questions for place one, and then we're going to rotate over to place four there. So, uh, would you guys like a coffee or something? Or, or you wait or, okay, okay, <clears throat> all right. Um, Regarding public participation, the Texas Open Meetings Act allows for public participation in local government. How will you ensure the public's voice is heard, and what steps will you take to foster an environment of open dialogue and public participation in city council meetings? And um, Dean, we'll go ahead and start off with you. Well, I think, I think the uh, Open Meetings Act is a super important uh, uh, a law that needs to be abided by, and I think there's some changes that are currently being made by, by Mayor Stanley and, and the current council that I think are very good. I think it's important uh, that the citizens have a, have a voice on, in these city council meetings. I think it's important that they uh, are engaged in every topic as we speak to them through the council meetings. Um, I, like having, I like the idea of having, having the, the, the citizens be able to engage as we go through the agenda items, at least the non-consent agenda items. And uh, so I do think that's very important. I think uh, possibly moving the meetings to a more uh, appropriate time where, where people can get more engaged would be a good idea. Um, I know that's being con contemplated now, and so I'm, I'm uh, very encouraged by that. I think that's important for the citizens to, to have a voice. And, and we, 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 need to be, we need to be transparent. We need to be trustworthy, and I think that's something that uh, that I think we could we can help help make a little bit better in time so I heard that I heard the alarm yeah so I mean I'm, I'm actually very impressed with with what the current council is doing right now to to adjust to those issues that that the citizens have had concerns about for a while and on top of that is I'd like to see us uh, work harder in you know, maybe something more towards like a town hall meeting structure uh, for each candidate to get out to the citizens and hear their voices and hear their concerns. And that way we're not having just to rely on them whenever they're coming in to the city council meetings to do public comment, but we're already hearing their voices and we're interacting with them outside of city hall as well. And so we've got 30 seconds for follow up and if any Anything else that you wanted to add there? There's not really a rebuttal going on here, but just uh, any follow-up, or if you're good, we're good, we'll move on to the next question. Okay. Great. Moving on to the next question. How will you hold yourself and other council members accountable to the promises made during the campaigns and the standards of the office? Yeah, so accountability is a big deal, and it's for me personal is big accountability. You know, throughout my career, that's that's what I live in and breathe by is accountability. I'm accountable for myself, accountable for others' actions, and I know the citizens are going to hold me accountable for any sort of decision that is made or any idea that I would come up with as an elected official. You know, as far as any promises made during the campaign, um, the only promise that I can remember that I made was to serve the citizens of Amarillo to the best of my abilities, and that's what I plan to do if elected. I think accountability obviously is a is an important issue. Integrity is is the biggest word to me that comes to mind when it comes to uh, to what we what we as a an individual or a council 
uh, can offer to the citizens, and we do have to listen to the citizens. And and uh, you know, my ideas and what I run on during my campaign is is uh, are, are important, I think, for me. But uh, I, there's a lot of people out there that I haven't heard from yet, so I'm, I think that's important to to listen to. And and I I, I have promised that uh, trust to be trustworthy and be transparent and have integrity. I think that integrity is what I live by and what I've made my kids live by in all their life too. So um, I think uh, to hold each other accountable is a big deal as well. So there's all, there's five of us, I'm one vote. Uh, a lot of people have made promises and I, I, I plan to hold myself and everybody else accountable to those, to those ideas. question in light of the LGBTQ communities push to sexualize the public square and public schools how will you use your influence if elected that is a very hot topic so we'll just hit it head-on right so in in my life I leave I lead with a biblical lens first right so that's how I've raised that's how I raised my family uh, I know that's gonna be a, a very interesting and, and, and tread light waters on that type of issue. But uh, one thing I will stand against is any sort of sexualization or demoralization of children. Well, I, I agree with Josh 100% on that. I mean, I, I think I, I live my life through faith as well. I, uh, I look at everything through, through what I think is, is biblically appropriate. Um, I know that every person on this earth has, has a right to be who they want to be. Uh, but as far as uh, uh, sexualizing people in public, especially children, I, I, would, I would certainly stand, against, stand on my faith and, and, and fight, for, fight against that. All right, so this next question. Uh, we've heard many criticisms and opinions of the actions of the past city council, with many citizens trying to link some of you on stage to uh, past city council members. Overall, do you agree with how the last city council handled city matters on the whole? And if not, where do you mainly disagree with their past actions? Well, I think that, that our past city council was, they were in there for six years, and we can't, we can't all look at each other and say that they did everything wrong. They did a lot of really good things. Um, the, the last few things they did in the last few years, I'm, I'm totally against. I was totally against going against the voters and uh, on the Civic Center deal. They, they, uh, the voters spoke, and that, that's where that should have landed, and, and we should have stayed there. I didn't, uh, I didn't like the, the public uh, outing of Mayor Stanley, the way that that happened. Uh, so there's there's a few things that, that, that happened in the last council that, that, that uh, took away from my from my trust from from that. But I, you know, there, there were a lot. Of, they they got the vet school done. I think that was a great thing for Amarillo. Uh, they worked really good with the ADC. I think the ADC's done a fantastic job of bringing bringing jobs to this community. And uh, so so there's there are some good things. But uh, but overall, I was I was certainly ready for a change as well. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, said we've heard many criticisms and opinions of the actions of the past city council. Overall, do you agree with how the last council has handled city matters? If not, where do you do disagree with their past actions? So, as far as regarding the past city council, you know, I think that they were dealt with a lot of interesting uh, situations. I mean, talk about COVID. That's something that's unprecedented. That's never been that hadn't had to have been dealt with before in the city and so I give them grace on that um, you know I, I'm excited for this new council coming in I'm excited to see how we can truly get back to a representative style of government and listen to the citizens of Amarillo and their needs and everything that needs to go on with the city as far as changing anything um, definitely against the Civic Center when the citizens speak that's their voice and by no means do elected officials need to go behind that voice and go around the corner 
right, you're up first for this one. Regarding transparency in budgeting, how do you plan on improving transparency in city budgeting? Can you provide specific measures or tools you would introduce to make budgeting decisions and their impact more understandable to the public? Yeah, so with transparency to me is just over communication with people. So in my line of work for the past nearly a decade is I've had experience with taxpayer funded budgets. And so I have had to make those hard decisions and explain those to the guys that when they need a piece of equipment or they need something, going to them and explain to them why they couldn't get it. It's, it's really hard to do. Um, it's hard on me, you know, because that's what they want and that's what they need. But as far as in, in the city budget with ideas, to me, starting out with is going to be definitely over communication, using a platform to get uh, the community involved. And like I said, town hall meetings to talk to them and explain to them what is going on with uh, different budgetary items. So this is regarding transparency and budgeting. How do you plan on improving transparency in city budgeting? Can you provide specific measures or tools you would introduce to make budgeting decisions and their impact more understandable to the public? Well, I mean, the first thing that, and I'm, I'm sure these guys have already gotten into it, the first thing that the city council is going to have to do is the budget. And so uh, we only have a finite amount of money. We've got basically a half a billion dollars. And I think the biggest deal that we need to do is, is, is listen to the citizens, uh, let's get the feedback from the citizens and find out what those priorities really are. Because um, I think the first thing you do before you do a budget, because we're just going to be basically reprioritizing where the money's going to be spent. So what are our priorities today? And what do our priorities need to be going forward? And that's where we're going to have to allocate the money to, to those people. And as far as the transparency goes, I think uh, we, we do need forums and, and communication to the, to the citizens on what those priorities need to be and where that money is going to be spent. Okay, Mr. Crump, 